My name is uh, Dr. Jay Mehta, MD, PhD. I am Professor of Medicine and Physiology and Biophysics at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm also a staff cardiologist at the Central Arkansas Veterans Healthcare System. I have just finished presenting my lecture on uh, inflammation and autophagy and the outcome after acute myocardial infarction. We've known for last uh, several decades, maybe two or three decades, that there is inflammation in acute myocardial infarction. And the general feeling has been that inflammation that occurs in myocardial infarction is not good. And that may increase the size of the infarct and it could be detrimental in terms of cardiac function after infarct and we should make every attempt to stop it. However, there have been many trials of anti-inflammatory drugs. Some of them are still going on and the jury is still out if the anti-inflammatory therapy will be good in myocardial infarction patients. So we have actually examined this concept in my laboratory. I should uh, move the clock a little bit back and about two, 20, 25 years ago when we showed that there was a intense inflammation in the hearts of uh, and dogs and uh, other small animals, and we showed that there was a lot of inflammation in the area supplied by the coronary artery that was occluded. And uh, in a global sense, when we uh, limited inflammation by use of uh, drugs and biologics, there appeared to be reduction in leukocyte infiltration in the heart, and there appeared to be, as I said, some reduction in myocardial dysfunction. But over the last uh, 10 years, 12 years, we have learned that there are a different types of inflammatory cells that accumulate in the heart. Some of these cells serve what we call reparative action they modify the repair process in the heart and may improve, may serve to scavenge the bad tissues and cardiac myocytes. And we also have become aware of another phenomena that occurs in the ischemic myocardium and that's called autophagy. Autophagy is a survival mechanism whereby tissues to try to protect themselves from injurious stimuli, such as bacteria and um, oxidized lipids and uh, other pro-inflammatory cell types. It has also become apparent that if the process of autophagy continues, then as the word implies, the tissues start to actually eat themselves, hence the word autophagy. So in these present studies that I presented, we examine the relationship between inflammation and autophagy. So we took uh, mice and occluded their left coronary artery and examined these mice at one week, two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks after occlusion of the coronary artery. And we observed that there was much inflammation in the areas surrounded the, surrounding the infarct and in, to some extent in the infarct area. And the inflammation was maximal at uh, one week after the coronary occlusion and then it began to decline. Um, we measured inflammation by measuring TNF-alpha, IL-6, uh, MCP-1, 
a host of inflammatory cytokines, a number of inflammatory cells themselves uh, at different uh, time points. And these measurements were made by qPCR and also by ELISA. So to just to recapitulate that there was a lot of inflammation in the heart peaking at about one week. Then we measured autophagy by different um, methods and uh, the autophagy levels, again measured by fluorescent microscopy and uh, certain biomarkers like BCL2 and LC3 appear to go up with time, peaking at one week, and then autophagy also began to decline thereafter. So the question came up, are the two phenomena, inflammation and autophagy, are related? And remember, we said autophagy may be protective. So we treated a separate group of mice with a very powerful anti-inflammatory agent, a TNF-alpha inhibitor, for one week. And indeed, as we expected, that the, all the markers of inflammation and leukocyte accumulation declined after the administration of this TNF-alpha inhibitor. However, two things happened. One, autophagy also declined proving or suggesting very strongly that there is a direct correlation between the development of autophagy and accumulation of inflammatory cells. But more importantly, the infox size appeared to actually increase with TNF-alpha administration and cardiac function measured by echocardiography also declined or the dysfunction increased. So this study suggested to us, I think for the first time, that inflammation in the early stages of infarct actually not all that detrimental. And the detrimental effect of stopping inflammation is related to elimination of autophagy. So this, we think, is the first study that shows a correlation between inflammation and autophagy. And, um, sort of implies that inflammation may actually, in some limited manner, may be good. And we should not be attempting to always block something that Mother Nature provides as a response to injury.